facing uh, with <laughs> with webex uh, in a context in which uh, we are discussing about cyber security it's very 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 nice event okay so good morning people in madrid and uh, good morning to all people connected remotely i'm gianni sebastiano chief strategy officer at exprivia and uh, i'm very happy to greet you and uh, and all connected, and I bring you the greetings of my president, uh, Domenico Favuzzi, who is currently flying uh, to Milan. So we are very proud to celebrate uh, this uh, cybersecurity event in uh, Madrid, just because we continue to observe the effectiveness of attackers and continue to be surprised on how cybercrime is impacting the digital transformation processes along the world. In Exprivia, we believe strongly on the need of more cooperation, information sharing to be more efficient in the, the defense. We believe the fact that we need to optimize investments and we should know where attackers are focusing in the specific industry, in the specific country. That's, that's, that's why we are, we are uh, uh, organizing events like this. Today, are going, uh, we are going to present the results of our research uh, on uh, cybercrime in Spain with a, a report that uh, is uh, starting to become a sort of reference, a standard for all subject matter experts. In Italy, surely we can say that today this report is uh, the unique reference for journalists, uh, experts, and also a consultant working in the field of cybersecurity. We have also inviting our partners and subject matter experts to, to share the, their experience in the next hours. Uh, I know that uh, Domenico and uh, his people organized a very, very uh, full agenda uh, in which uh, uh, experts and uh, and uh, people reference in this world can 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 share uh, uh, their experience information sharing and cooperation is uh, definitively our answer on cybercrime so we don't want uh, I, I don't want to 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 waste your time and to let you to enter directly into the specific matters of cybersecurity and then uh, with the hope uh, you will find this session very interesting. My best wishes for this interesting day. Hi to all. Thanks, Gianni. Now, let me pass to, I mean, Alberto, you are the star now. Okay. Okay. Uh... Okay. Buenos días a todos los presentes y a todos los que nos siguen en remoto y están conectados a este seminario. Hoy hablaremos de cibercrimen y fundamentalmente de la violación de la privacidad en España. Si bien, permítanme, antes de pasar en materia y a presentar a los ponentes y a presentar las presentaciones, déjenme unos minutos para hablar o unas eh, líneas para hablar de Esprivia. Esprivia es un integrador de sistemas con sede central en Molfetta, Italia, y con una fuerte presencia eh, global y particularmente en España. En España prestamos servicios a clientes tan importantes como Endesa, Transporte de Barcelona, la Fábrica Nacional de Moneda y Timbre, Simón o Ide Logistic, entre otros. Tenemos mucha experiencia y conocimiento en las especificidades del mercado y estamos organizados por mercados con competencias como la inteligencia artificial, SAP o la ciberseguridad que proporcionamos a todos los mercados donde estamos presentes. En Esprilla creemos que no existe la ciberseguridad para todos los mercados. Existe específicamente para aquellos en los que estamos dándola, automoción, tren, aviones, etcétera. Lo mismo para la inteligencia artificial, lo mismo para SAP. Y además, hablamos de la ciberseguridad, tenemos que entender no solo dónde la estamos pro proponiendo, 
sino también en el ámbito del territorio. No es lo mismo las amenazas que veremos ahora en España como en cualquier otro territorio. De hecho, seguimos observando que la efectividad de los atacantes y seguimos sorprendiéndonos de cómo el cibercrimen está impactando en la transformación digital. De ahí la importancia de protegernos. En Esprivia creemos en la necesidad de más cooperación, de compartir información para ser eficientes en la defensa. Creemos en el hecho de que necesitamos optimizar las inversiones y debemos saber dónde se centran los atacantes en la industria específica, en el país específico. Por eso hoy presentamos los resultados de nuestra investigación sobre la ciberdelincuencia en España, con un informe que empieza a ser una referencia para todos los expertos en la materia. Por supuesto, también describiremos nuestra estrategia para reducir el riesgo e invitamos a nuestros socios y a otros expertos en la materia a compartir su experiencia en las próximas horas. El intercambio de información y la cooperación son nuestra respuesta a la ciberdelincuencia. Pasemos a ver la agenda. Después de, perdón, después de mi presentación, ¿Presentación? le pasaré la palabra a Doménico Rauseo. Doménico es un gran experto en ciberseguridad, es el director de ciberseguridad de Esprivia y colabora con varias universidades y escribe en varios periódicos sobre el evento, así como en programas de televisión. Él presentará el resumen de lo que se ha observado en España en los últimos tres meses. Después, Rosita Galeandro, la jefa de inteligencia de amenazas de ciberseguridad en Esprivia, nos lo contará en más detalle. Y de nuevo, Doménico les contará nuestra estrategia y daremos la posibilidad a nuestros socios de aportar soluciones. También hemos decidido invitar a alguien muy importante en el mundo de la, de la ciberseguridad, un gurú de la inteligencia artificial, como Pedro Leo de IBM. Estoy seguro de que les gustará su presentación sobre la inteligencia artificial. Y por último, Daniele Gadaleta, el director internacional de Esprivia, cerrará este eh, esposio con eh, un breve resumen de lo que es la ciberseguridad, lo que es Esprivia y lo que eh, hacemos en el mundo. Antes de pasar, eh, permítanme informar que tenemos abierto eh, unos canales de chat en Twitter, en el cual está disponible para interactuar con los ponentes. Si quieren hacer una pregunta, podéis utilizar el Twitter que aparece en la pantalla, el hashtag Madrid Cyber Security Forum y la cuenta del ponente. Para responder, se debe usar el mismo hashtag y no usar Ripple, sino Quote Retweet. Las cuentas de los speakers, por si quieren eh, hacerle alguna pregunta, aparecen en la pantalla. Muchas gracias de nuevo eh, por estar presente y confío y estoy seguro que eh, será productivo para todos. Y le doy la palabra a Doménico para que comience con nuestras presentaciones. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Alberto. I mean, a lot of expectation now on myself. You know? uh, I would prefer that you say, uh, Domenico, I mean, I don't know why he's here. You know, maybe he will say something interesting, but if you say a lot of good things about me, so I, should, I should confirm that is challenging. And I need to start with the uh, okay, executive summary. Okay. Um, so before to start, let me uh, let me ask if uh, everyone can hear me. No, I can see the, the, the slide. Rosita and Ana Maria, can you please confirm? Yes. Okay? Yes. Yes. 
think it's okay. Okay, so let me start. I mean, thanks a lot, Alberto. You have been very kind with me. Uh, you have created a lot of expectations. So this is, I will talk several times during the day. I will talk several times during the day, but, um, and uh, let me focus on what I'm going to discuss right now. And what I'm going to discuss right now is what we have been observing in cybersecurity in Spain. Uh, Alberto, Gianni already mentioned it, are mentioning why, I mean, why we are doing this. I mean, I don't think that we have a cyber security for all the season. Does not exist. A cyber crime is not for all the season. And uh, even we do not think that cyber security is uh, something that uh, is not related to the specific territory. This is a concept that uh, in security is very well known. In security, if you go in London, I'm not sure who, who from here is coming from London, but if you go in London, I'm sure that you do not have the helmet to be more safe. You know, why? Because usually in uh, London, I mean, in the last uh, 40 years, uh, no, the last, uh, probably 100 of years, uh, we have not seen any bomb, or at least, at least not bomb that are coming from outside. If you go in a city where there is a war, probably you have the helmet. So if you go to London, maybe you have to go. If you go to London, maybe you have to study the, so the, the traffic circulation because you know that they're driving in the wrong direction. Well, at least, of course, they think that they have a different opinion about what is the right direction. But at the end of the story, because of course, if you don't know that that kind of circulation, of course, you can be you can be in danger. Now, in cyber security, it's exactly the same. Uh, you cannot mitigate, you can, even if we talk very often about zero risk, and then we talk wider later about this topic. But if we talk about zero risk, does not assist zero in risk in cyber security. We need to work to reduce the risk. And if we want to use to reduce the risk, you need to understand exactly what are the risks that are impacting your industry, what are the risks that are impacting those the specific your territory. We have done, uh, we start this observation in Italy and this was very successful. We start this observation in Spain and that has been very successful as well. And what is curious, and that is very curious. Now, unfortunately, we do not have time here, but I will, uh, uh, just to prove what I'm saying, I will suggest you to see a both report, Italian report and Spanish report, and you will see that there are a lot of difference between these two reports. Now, Let's start focusing on what on what are the general theme of uh, the so, uh, of the cyber crime today. You know, and I'm sure that in Spain, uh, I've seen a lot of newspaper talking about the impact of the war on the cyber crime. You have, you have been talking about the uh, the Conti, about Conti, Conti di Acerti, not the the former president of IBM, uh, no, of uh, no, IBM. No, no the former president of the parliament of uh, uh, Italy. No, I, I apologize very often. I mean, I've been working for 40 years in IBM. So uh, sometimes IBM comes to my mind, even as has nothing to do. No, so, I mean, uh, uh, you heard that Conti is a, 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 a hacking team that is very close to the Russians, while uh, Anonymous uh, has married the, uh, the Ukrainian theory. And uh, you have been talking, and a lot of newspapers are talking about Conti and Ukraine. Now, if you look at the impact of uh, the, these two teams, these two groups on the cyber crime that has been observed uh, in Spain, you will see that uh, almost it's uh, nothing, you know? So at the end of the story, the war, the real war, if we are going to the number, has no impact at all. If the war does not exist, we keep talking about cybersecurity and cybercrime uh, in Spain. What is the industry that is more impacted? The financial sector. I mean, and that is another, 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 very, another very interesting point. We keep talking about, uh, you know, cyber war uh, or uh, ethical uh, campaign, uh, but at the end of the story, if we can solve all the crime that are related to the financial industry, we do not talk about cybersecurity anymore. So, and that is, I mean, that is quite curious because of insecurity. That is the only difference between security and cybersecurity. In security, in the physical security and in information technology in general, 
all the all the uh, all the innovation came from the military industry, thanks to the Turing, thanks to Fortran, all kind of innovation that comes from the military industry. If you talk about cybercrime, thanks to Zeus, you know, Citadel, are all activities, all, you know, all the biggest innovation comes from the financial sector. And the financial sector, at least in Spain, is quite, is quite, uh, uh, quite impacted. And then at the second point, that is the second, and that is also quite curious. You know, we keep talking about cybercrime, but really, if we are going to count the GDPR violation, this is not cybercrime. No, this is the official uh, government of Spain that, that, that tell to the industry, look, you are not following GDPR rules in Spain. And well, those are, this is quite uh, impacting quite a lot in uh, uh, in the in the uh, in this scenario. So we should keep, we should focus on banking, but we should focus also on observing uh, the utilization of data inside, in, inside, the, inside the company. Okay, so this is the first. The first uh, observation that we have done is that uh, at the end of the story, the world has not impacted at all, regardless the, the volume of communication, of discussion that we can see in the press, at the end of the story, war, at least in Spain, in Spain has not impacted at all. Now let's let uh, let's analyze now the uh, the number of the incident, the numbers of attack, and also the privacy violation that you can see is quite high, and that is quite a believe me. I don't want to say they want to say that you are good or you are bad, but if you look at this uh, picture, uh, I, I can tell you that the privacy violation in Spain are quite impacting compared with other with other with other uh, country. If you look at the number of attack, at the numbers of incident, there are, I would say, I do not see good news here because of the number of attack starting from the first quarter. So in 2022, I would say that has been a very bad year because the number of attack have increased and the war has nothing to do. So the war has nothing to do, as you have seen in the slide before, but the number of attack are increasing. They are basically double or all, uh, or every every three months, and what is even more even more uh, impressing is that the fork between attack and incident looks that is increasing. So it seems that uh, attacker are doing more attack, and attacker are becoming all the time more efficient. And you know, I mean, to be honest, uh, I, mean, I don't like to say you know. I don't like to talk about, you know, because when we talk about cybersecurity, very often people say attacks are increasing, incidents are increasing, you know, seems to like to be, you know, to create terror. So in the hope that someone is going to invest, you know, actually we are doing something different. We are counting, just to be clear in, and by the way, we had a lot of problems in this topic because of in the last quarter in Italy, attack and incident have decreased. You know, have decreased and everyone, was talking, was looking at me when I was mentioned of this, and they say, "Are you saying that the attack are decreasing? Are you are you mad? I mean, you sell cybersecurity. You, you cannot say that the attack are decreasing. Attack are decreasing. I cannot say the same in Spain. The Spain, a number of attack, a number of incidents are increasing. And frankly speaking, that is consistent also on privacy violation. Privacy violation are increasing, not like the attack and like the incident, but are, are increasing. And what again? What I sh should worried us is that the fork between attack and incident is increasing you know so it looks that we attack are always all the time more efficient okay now uh, we have talked about good bad news so far let me try to see some good news and in cyber security we sell technology we we develop a very cool architecture we talk about uh, zero uh, Zero day vulnerability, things like, you know, uh, vulnerability are, are not known. You know, how, 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 how much we, we talk in, in cybersecurity conference about this stuff? You know, zero day, the numbers of uh, the, the, the micro segmentation, so on and so forth, you know, all things that are very complicated. Now, phishing and social engineering is the uh, majority of uh, attack. 
So my, why we talk about micro segmentation, that is very sophisticated things that of course is necessary. But uh, why we talk about micro segmentation, the majority of victims are victim of phishing. Phishing are stupid email, things like, you know, click here because of uh, you have seen you have won uh, 20 million of euro. You click here because of the, this guy uh, is talking bad about you. I'm talking about some campaign that I've seen on Facebook. On, uh, so I'm, sure, I'm quite sure that each of you, each of you, if you are on Facebook, have received an email saying, look, there was something that was a campaign that was very, that was the, one of the most aggressive campaign that we have seen in Italy, you know, what was a, a WhatsApp message that was saying, look here, click here if you want to see this guy that was a politician, that by the way is not very appealing, naked. So a lot of people, a lot of people clicked on that. And by, believe me, that was nothing particularly sexy in, the, <laughs> in that, you know. And in fact, to last year, I started my presentation start. Click here if you want to see myself naked, you know. And the world, everyone was saying, no, no, I will not click. Of course, I will not click. Yes, but if you, in order to see that guy, I mean, I'm, I'm not very cool. I mean, I'm, I know that, you know, but I don't, I don't think that this guy is much more appealing than, than myself. Uh, Emmanuel, now I need to start the game <laughs> because of you. I, I want to, I wanted to listen from the beginning. <laughs> No, I will, I will. I will tell you what you miss in private. You know, don't worry. <laughs> okay, so that is the the good things is that uh, we need investment in cybersecurity. But at the end of the story, probably the biggest investment that we can do is the awareness. We should uh, we should be. Uh, I mean, there is a campaign that has been launched by the European Community that says "Think before you click." Well. We should start thinking before to before click, and this kind of events are good exactly for this because we should start telling to the people, look, we can do a lot of things with technology, with process, with services, but you need to think before you click. Before if you think before you click, probably we are not talking about cybersecurity. They know that maybe I need to find another job, but at the end of the story, if we can sell phishing, most of the people in this room need to do a different job. This is. The, this is the reality, starting from myself. <laughs> the way. So, I mean, I, I have to say that I live on cybersecurity, but uh, also, I mean, we talk about zero days, you know, we talk about vulnerability that no one knows, but actually most of, of attack are a bit successful with vulnerability that people know. So remember the helmet in London, you know, of course, I mean, I want to talk about unknown vulnerability, but I do not put that is the helmet if I go in London. Let's try to fix the known vulnerability. Majority of the incident are caused not because of a vulnerability is not known, but because of there is a known vulnerability that has not been that has not been fixed. All the others is true. You know, look at zero day. And that is yeah, and you see what is the, the there is no proportion at all between the noise in the market and the numbers. Go to a cybersecurity and you will talk, you will listen about zero day, uh, including myself. I mean, I'm not saying that you are the bad guy and I am the good guy. You know, when I talk to a cyber, when I'm invited to a cybersecurity, I talk about artificial intelligence, about zero day, about zero trust. These are the kind of topics that uh, uh, people want to hear from myself. The reality is that zero day in Spain is nothing. No vulnerability, a lot. So we should focus on this rather than now. Maybe of course, if we have money, vote on zero day. But let's start to fishing and non vulnerability. Now that is uh, quite curious because of uh, there is uh, a question that we try to give an answer. I mean, we know that uh, defense arrives after the digitalization, and that is quite normal for security. Uh, uh, in Formula One or in automotive, we did not invent the brake first and then the engine later. We start with the engine, we start driving, and then first or later we arrived that we had to stop. So we, went, we invented the brake, I guess, probably, at least in the history of automotive. I don't think that the first chapter is how to stop the car, <laughs> but I would hope that the car is going faster, correctly in manual. So it's quite so. 
the question that uh, arrived to myself was, but uh, the digitalization, 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 sorry, is going faster or slower than the security. And we make, we develop an algorithm and this algorithm now is subject to uh, uh, patent disclosure. But uh, we developed an argument that industry by industry can tell us if the industry is investing in the cybersecurity more than what is investing in the acceleration of the digitalization. Digitalization. This is a word that is complicated. I, I will try to invent another word to say the same time, the same thing. Okay, so the good thing is that this is another positive, positive uh, uh, message for Spain. The good thing is that. Uh, for all the industry, maybe just automotive is flat, but for all the industry, the index tell us that we are doing, uh, we are doing, uh, uh, and we are investing a lot in cybersecurity. So probably because the third quarter is a quarter where Italy and Spain goes in vacation. That is something that we have observed also in uh, also in Italy. But during the third quarter, this is probably the only element that we see identical in Spain and in Italy. In both cases, the efficiency of investment in cybersecurity looks to be more important, but probably because of either in Italy and in Spain, because of the vacation, the project of digitalization have been a little bit slowed down. So the only thing that we have done is correct fixes. And so we see that actually overall, the index is going better than the the quarter before. And uh, that is uh, another element that we keep, uh, we keep, we were keep uh, uh, observing. Also in this case, I mean, there was, there was a guy that's, uh, I mean, actually we start observing just that only the number of IoT devices exposed on internet, in internet. We could say that in Spain, we have a, about now 7 million of IoT devices exposed on internet. And that is a, you know, a dramatic message, by the way, because 99% of the time we talk about cybersecurity referring to the IT, the server, the client, maybe also the mobile, right? But uh, when we talk about, when we think about uh, cybersecurity, we are not thinking to the refrigerator. We are not th thinking to the IoT devices in the end of the consumers. We think to the IoT device. We keep talking about the camera, the camera in the in the in the fact in the farm. But the camera, we uh, we have a problem there with the camera as well because also the camera in a company is not managed properly, in my view, in most of cases. But at least there is an owner there. We, we can talk about governance of that camera, but there is a no way. If, some, if someone is hacking the camera, we know who should point the finger. But if someone is hacking a smart TV, if someone is hacking a refrigerator and use that kind of refrigerator to attack the, the, the Russian government, who is the who is responsible for this? And by the way, and this is a very serious problem because of uh, also for the Geneva uh, Agreement that uh, define who is uh, who can be considered uh, a military person and who can be considered a citizen, so cannot be touched. Also in this case, we have a big problem because assume that someone is acting by refrigerator, the refrigerator that is uh, in my house, and from this refrigerator we start an attack against the Kremlin. At that point, I, the Kremlin can consider myself no more as a, a citizen, but can consider myself as a soldier because I'm attacking them. There is a lot of, we have still a lot of discussion, but a lot of people think about this topic, about the topic of the cybersecurity of the future. And I'm smiling about that. We have 7 million of devices in Spain and we consider this as the cybersecurity of the future. That is the, cyber, the problem, the biggest problem that we have today. But there was someone that said to me, hey, Dom, look, the fact is that a device is exposed on the internet does not mean 
that uh, uh, we are less secure or not. I would say, okay, yes, I think yes. If someone exposes something on the internet, it's just a matter of time, and I will tell you later why. So I will stay with that slide, but that slide uh, it give me the feeling on, on how secure we are. But we start, okay, that's fine. Since the people are interested and understand, not just alone if someone is exposed to the internet, we want to understand if uh, uh, someone is exposed to the internet and uh, has some vulnerability that give us the possibility to hack the device. And the vulnerability that, of course, uh, we cannot make penetration test, of course. We can just have a look to the simpler vulnerability. I cannot mention this because of this, in this case, case we have a, a pattern disclosure, but uh, we have identified vulnerability that can be easily discovered without making penetration tests. So just look, you know, just have a look at the, I can, you can imagine what are these vulnerabilities. So basically, if uh, there is requested or not, you user the password, just this. And look at this, we have started to understand if, uh, IoT devices exposed on the internet are more or less secure. And in the, also in this case, uh, we, have seen, we have seen that uh, the, uh, there is a general improvement in the third quarter. So the uh, unsecurity of IoT looks to be reduced. So that means that either way in Spain, we have not installed a new unsecured device well, we have started protecting our device inserting user ID and password, at least during the third quarter. This, this, this is what uh, we have observed. Now, we, we, uh, we of course, have identified some categories. Uh, and uh, just to give you an idea about the dimension of the problem, you know, have a look to what are the most dangerous categories. And uh, we are thinking that, uh, I mean, we talk about cybersecurity as something that is regarding the uh, public administration, the, the health care. But if you look here, health care that, by the way, has been introduced in this quarter, so we do not have a statistical trend, but we can have a look to, the, to what is happening now. But health care is, as, of course, I mean, hacking a device in health care maybe can generate someone that is going to die. But in terms of number, they are not so bad. In health care, that looks to be a very bad situation. At the end of the story, looks quite, uh, quite uh, well positioned. What are, what is the avoid? I don't know why we had this peak in the, in the third quarter. You know, so that is something that is very curious. And frankly speaking, I don't want to say I don't, I don't want to lie. I, we do not understand what happened in Spain to give this um, big peak on VoIP. That is quite curious because VoIP was is almost not relevant in Italy, and why it was not relevant in Spain the quarter before. But now on why we had this peak that is quite curious. So maybe you have an answer. You, <laughs> you, have, you can explain you why in, in Spain we have this peak in third quarter. But uh, at the end of the story, one of the category that uh, it looks to be more, more exposed are the printers. And the printers are not the printers that are inside the uh, hospital is not the printer that are inside uh, of the companies. Are the printers that each of us is owning? Uh, each of us probably want to print the onboarding card while they are going. Uh, they are arriving, they are arriving at home, but uh, of course they want to do that as quick as possible without the pain to insert the user ID and password. Sometimes, so we. Do, I mean, we talk about paperless, and uh, we, we realize that we are not just very paper dependent, but also the paper makes the entire world not just less uh, 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 create a lot of problem with the population, but also make the entire world less secure. So print, be careful to printers, and anyway, printers are much more unsecure than medical device. And also in this case, how many article we have seen on medical devices on uh, uh, healthcare, well, they are bad, but not so bad, and uh, you know, less than the average. Same thing, same stuff for the PLC and the ICS. PLC and the ICS are basically devices that uh, can control um, uh, industrial operations. So they are bad, but not so bad like wipe, like printers, like camera. Okay. okay.
That is a quite introduction. Of course, now we are going to have Rosita, that is the head of uh, the research lab on cybercrime in Italy. She's going to go much more in detail. I decided to take just to make just a very short snapshot of what are the topics that uh, I feel more relevant. Emmanuel, I know what you are taking. I say short snapshot, not very short. <laughs> hopefully, I've been in, uh, hopefully I've been in time. Rosita, I'm done. Rosita, I'm done if you are still there, of course. No, I can. Rosita, ci sei, vero? Dimmi che ci sei. Sì, Domenico, parlavo in mute, sorry. Eh, perfetto, non mi stavo preoccupando, veramente. Cioè, voglio dire, okay. Sì. ok. See you the presentation, Domenico? Sì, see the presentation. Ok. Good morning everyone, I'm Rosita Galeandro, Cyber Security Observatory Manager of Scrivia and today I will have the pleasure of presenting you with some of the results of our study uh, conducted on the state of cyber security in Spain by our cyber security observatory uh, uh, on attacks, security incident and privacy violation. In particular, today I will present the situation uh, regarding the third quarter of, of 2022 and how the numbers of attacks, security incident, and privacy violation have changed compared to previous quarters. I will show you some sheet of the study uh, we have conducted and uh, uh, which you can find in detail by downloading our threat intelligence report. A comparative analysis uh, of the cases recording in 3rd Q 2022 equal to 273, compared to the same period of the, pre the, of, uh, of the previous years, 3Q 2021, equal to 100, shows a growth rate uh, of about 173%. Uh, if we extend the reference interval to the data for the current year from uh, first Q 2022 to third Q 2022, a total of 542 security cases are observed. Uh, so in the same period of uh, the past year from uh, uh, 1st Q 2021 to 3rd Q 2021, uh, about uh, uh, 300 cases were recorded with, uh, uh, with a percentage increase of uh, uh, 78%. Precisely 132 attacks, uh, about uh, 48 percent, 91 security incident, 33 percent, and 50 privacy violation, uh, about uh, 80 percent, were recorded uh, during 30Q 2022. Compared to Second Q 2022 for attacks and security incidents, there is a significant increase. Uh, in fact, uh, we have plus 180% attacks. Specifically, the service taken into consideration when compared with the toes of the first quarter of 2021 show an exponential increase in the numbers of attacks. For 
third Q 2022, out of a total of 273 cases, the cybersecurity observatory notes that a high percentage of these cases are attributable to activities related to cybercrime. Uh, there are, in fact, there are 270 cases related to cybercrime, cyber crime, about 79%. Following the reasons for the cases are attributable to the data breach and only minimally related to activism and cyber war. Uh, the constant and increasing use of computer technology uh, in general attracts cyber criminals who want to profit from their actions. The largest number of victims of attacks carried out in third Q 2022 belong the, the, to the finance sector. The percentage is close to uh, 34% of the total number of victims. Therefore, the trend observed in the second Q 2022 continues, which always sees finance as the preferred sector by cyber attackers, followed by software hardware and uh, uh, public administration. Uh, also, in this case, uh, the percentage feature is the mirror image of what was recorded in the, uh, in the previous quarter. The percentage uh, of attacks uh, on the uh, industrial sector, the first sector of uh, uh, interest of cybercriminal, also pass uh, uh, about 10% of the total. In this sheet, there are the different types of attacks analyzed in third Q 2022. Specifically, there are three most used attack techniques in order, phishing social engineering, malware, and no vulnerabilities, with uh, which they represent about 97% of the total. While zero day brute force and DDoS attacks remain uh, in smaller numbers, and uh, the, the first in the ranking, phishing social engineering, represent 47% 40, uh, of the total number of cases. This constant presence uh, highlights uh, that. Uh, uh, Phishing attacks can have multi multiple, multiple economic impacts on the business of uh, uh, public or uh, private organizations. The types of damage, damage perpetrated by cybercriminals during 32-2022 Continue the trend of the previous month. Data theft ranks first, now rising to the worrying percentage of around 64% of uh, total attacks. Uh, data theft is the illegal storage of transfer, transfer or, uh, of personal, financial, or property uh, information. This can include the password, uh, software codes, uh, algorithms, and uh, processes. Data theft can have serious consequences for the individuals involved and the organization concerned. In the second place, we find service interruption, 52, and the first place, money. Analyzing the sheet uh, in this uh, slide, following a detailed uh, analysis performance, the presence of three classes of malware can be seen, uh, banking trojans, botnet, and Trojan. What is, uh, uh, however, what is uh, of particular concern are Trojan, which uh, can transform computer system into real zombie, 
with the aim of inserting the device inside the botnet. Uh, botnet, uh, a system used by malicious uh, actor, cyber criminal, to carry out uh, cyber attacks uh, in uh, all the world. Uh, according to a malware classification, one of the, uh, of the Trojan that uh, in the last period has performed illegal activities causing damage to reputation and compliance is uh, an advanced level Trojan that spreads mainly from spear campaign phishing using uh, email which uh, contain malicious attachment or links and execute malicious code when opened. In, uh, in 30Q2022, Trojan accounted for around 44% of all malware, followed by Banking Trojan 21% and Botnet 10%. If you want to, to get in contact with us, we are on, on our Twitter account, Exprivia underscore Sai, or uh, through the official website of Exprivia. Thank you all. Okay, now uh, I pass the word to Domenico. Domenico, I... I make the uh, coordinator to share the slide. Rosita, you have been quicker than the executive summary. I was, <laughs> I was, uh, I was just, okay. Wait a second. Okay. Okay, please confirm that that all is okay. You know, I'm quite surprised that they usually during okay, the, Domenico. During the during the web meeting, there are a lot of things that are not working. Now in this case, you know, we are we are working uh, and everything is okay. And then frankly speaking, I'm starting to be, you know, a little bit worried. Uh, what is what is up? Uh, uh, what is happening? Okay, so uh, uh, one more time, I will try to be as much as disruptive as possible. And uh, I will start with something that uh, usually people never say in the cybersecurity conferences. And uh, one of the, the statements that uh, I strongly believe when we talk about cybersecurity, unfortunately, is that in cybersecurity does not exist a return of investment. Now, all the time that I say this, a lot of people jump, jump on top of me because they say, come on, what is, how is this possible? But things, you know, first of all, I mean, now, of course, if I, or if I ask you in this room, maybe a lot of people, will say uh, that you have experience experience in uh, hacking maybe you have been uh, uh, hopefully you have never hacked people or services but maybe you know how to hack a services or a thing but uh, of course we are this is, we are in a room where we, we have cyber security uh, experts but usually when i go in conferences and i say how many people has never hacked a service and of course, you know, there is someone that who, I see young people that want to say, yes, I've done, but of course they have never done that. Then the second question is, uh, who is able to act? And also in this case, maybe someone start to, you know, people that usually do penetration tests, but are very few in a big community. Majority of people that are in this digital ecosystem are doctors, are engineers, civil engineer, I mean, not that, are uh, um, lawyers, you know? Uh, 
are people that are not an expert in cybersecurity. That is people that usually stay in the defense. I mean, then I'm, I, 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 start, I prefer to, to think about attack and defense because in cybersecurity, the, the bad and good, you know, are always crossing with, with the other. So people that stay in the defense usually are people that are not very much professional in, in the field of cybercrime, or cybersecurity, cyber attack. It's correct. So in one end, we have people that are very well specialized. In the other end, we have people that usually do a different job. But that is, that by the way, is a big, a big, I mean, if I'm going and play soccer uh, against Messi, I, have, I, I mean, you can say, well, yeah, but you can, if you train every day for two, for one month, two months, yeah, I mean, I would have no hope. Messi is stronger than me, and I'm going to lose. Same with cybersecurity. One end, we have people that are very well specialized, and the other end, we have people that try, try to uh, uh, to do their best. That is the first. Second, the attacker decide when to make an attack. People that receive an attack does not is not prepared to receive an attack, and that's, that is a, a very big problem. If I go to him, I mean. I'm much older than Emmanuel, you know. But if we, I, if I, I go to Emmanuel, that is stronger than me. If we engage formally, Emmanuel kill me. But uh, I mean, uh, Emmanuel is on my right for people. That... <laughs> but if I go, if I met Emmanuel in the middle of the street, and give a shot to him, of course he's not prepared. So I mean, even if there is Tyson, and if I go close to Tyson, I can give him a shot. Then of course he will kill me. So, but, but as first he will receive the shot, you know. So in one end we have people that are very specialized that can decide when to run the attack. In the other end there are people that are not specialized and that uh, receive the, the attack. They do not plan to receive an attack. And then the the two elements are enough. No, there is a third element, and the third element is that we talk about cybersecurity because we talk because we are on internet. And the internet has not been created to be secure. Now, of course, I can make millions of examples, but that is uh, believe me. The internet has not been created to be secure. Just to uh, let me say that this, and then I will move to the next topic. Things about, I mean, uh, if I see botnet, the botnet is something very bad, you know? It's botnet is something that we talk about. Um, all that, if the tweet, uh, have you seen Trojan botnet are things that in cybersecurity, well, suggest us something bad. The reality is that a couple of years ago, we were 95, 96, 97, we were thinking about agents that we were talking about agents that give us the possibility to control the service from another PC. So the agent is very nice. And it is a, we have one, I remember in the 95, 96, when we were able to capture a laptop in the other part of the world, you know, the remote control on TV. Well, everyone was happy, but that was the agent. Today we call that botnet and seem to, seem to be very bad. So internet has not has been created to accelerate. It's not has been created to secure. So we we have this big problem. No, so the fact that does not exist a return of investment, what does imply? Imply that uh, it's difficult to size. Uh, I'm assuming that someone wants to invest. Of course, the priority in hospital is never to protect the check-in uh, of the of the of the hospital. It's true that if the check-in of the hospital does not work, maybe someone is going to die. We only seen that. But uh, if I am a doctor and uh, I need to pro I, I need to spend one dollar on a firewall or uh, on um, a medical device, most of case I spend money of medical device. When I'm going to spend money on cybersecurity, uh, usually I'm going to spend money in cybersecurity after an attack. Once there is an attack, I start to invest money and attack of at after attack, I start, I start to have very complicated and complex infrastructure that has not been managed. And uh, one of the, 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 it's curious that our client more than ask, asking us you know, please protect us on a threat. Protect us against attack. Clients are asking us, please 
help us to reduce the complexity because of uh, incident after incident, projects done very quickly, after project done very quickly, we have invested a lot of money and then now we have a lot of problem in managing this complexity. So managing the complexity is the request that we have and maybe to, later I'm going to have some answer from uh, our previous partner that we have in this room, uh, but uh, managing the complexity is one of the challenge that is identical in dimension to the complexity, to the problem, to protecting from, from a threat. Another element that our client are suggesting, are giving to us is, uh, uh, please try to um, help us to make efficient investment. And here we are going to touch another topics. And the other topic I'm going to touch is the following. Unfortunately, in automation, I make an investment and I make an investment later just and only if there is a return of investment. In cybersecurity, as I said, we cannot do that. We make an investment and tomorrow we have a vulnerability and the investment that we have done is going to disappear. So we should start again. That, by the way, I want to be fair. It's a good thing for us because I work in cybersecurity. But I, our clients, of course, want to make sure that they will make an investment. This investment is persistent. So, and in order to have investment that are consistent, we need to provide extreme competence. And in order to provide the extreme competence, we need to be the guy that know very well how the attackers, how and what the attacks are doing. So, what are what is the, the experience cybersecurity architecture is a, a sort of answer to this request. Uh, I we based our infrastructure, our uh, strategy on the threat intelligence. Uh, we already talked. We already mentioned why threat intelligence is uh, uh, necessary because of we need to understand exactly what is necessary. We do not have unlimited resources. Of course, the threat intelligence can be accessed through API. We have also an approach that is uh, 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 based on open data. So everyone can access information on specific IOC, the API. Everyone can access the data consolidated. Of course, who are who is interested to access data and uh, information on the specific IOC, or are interested, for example, the team that Rosita, Rosita is handling, the cybersecurity research team, the report that we have, that we are presenting is just a consolidation of data that are coming from our threat intelligence, or all our technologies, CM, ADR in particular, are using the threat intelligence, or, all the assets that we have developed are using our thread intelligence, and we make also risk assessment based on the on uh, uh, the knowledge of the cybercrime in the specific country. So when we suggest what are the security control that needs to be implemented, we suggest the security control that needs to be implemented based on what are the threads that are present on in the, on the specific industry on the specific uh, uh, on the specific territory. Uh, what we, in our in our uh, in Esprivia we have a very uh, flexible delivery model. We have four uh, departments, and we will tell you later what are these four, what uh, are doing these four department. And these four department, of course, are accessing technology, are accessing data, and they are also using technology that our partner are providing. And all the technology that our partner provider are inserted in our security operation center. And uh, we have a blueprint of the of the technology that we are using. So, if we use the technologies because and if we recommend the technology to our client is uh, because of we are using that technology is because of we have inserted that specific technology in our uh, in our blueprint. Of course, we cover we cover uh, uh, the complete NIST framework. And uh, let me tell you something a little bit more regarding what are the services that are provided in uh, our, from this four department. We have an advisory team that bas basically uh, perform risk assessment, either on ET, on classical ET, but also on, uh, or IOT, on, uh, on IOT. Uh, that is the, I mean, I don't, like I don't want to publish all the report that we create, but just to give you an idea uh, regarding what is the, our approach, 
we do not talk to the clients uh, you are good or bad in configuration management we are not good you are not telling to the client uh, look you are good or bad in uh, uh, in uh, security information and event management we'll tell to our client look according to your pos or, or posture you are more exposed to an attack like ddos or uh, you are more exposed to wanna cry and considering that wanna cry in your territory is very popular. You, I, we recommend you to invest in security control that are related to that. That is quite unique if you compare the, the assessment framework that I can see uh, to our wide level. I, I think is, uh, is we got with this uh, with this team we got a certification from the IOXT Alliance. So we are actually one of the few country at worldwide level that uh, can provide uh, can support our client to certify IoT device. And uh, the certification of IoT device is the cybersecurity of the future, as I said before. Because of uh, of course we can talk about governance while we are inside the fire. But when we are in the house, if uh, someone is going to buy a refrigerator, this uh, this person needs to be sure that the refrigerator is secured by the side. Well, uh, IoT is one of the few framework, uh, probably is the only framework that exists in terms of certification of IoT device. Expri is certified to provide certification this, uh, on, uh, on this device. We manage, we manage the infrastructure, the security that is related to the infrastructure, so we have a dedicated team. And uh, we have a team that is, that is focusing on uh, the digital trust and governance in particular in the financial sector. So we have, for, we have, for example, uh, we, we have tons of certification. I'm just mentioning here yes, the most important certification that we got as a company. We have the, we have a, uh, we got the SWIFT CDP assessor certification. And uh, all our services can be performed with a very flexible delivery model. We can, perform uh, our services in the house of, of the client, but we can perform our services from our security uh, security operation center that, by the way, got the Star Secu the, uh, the, the Cloud Security Alliance Level 1 certification. Uh, all the, all the, all the got the Cyber Security Made in Europe certification. And the, the cyber, by the way, one of the reasons why, of course, we have also other certification, but one of the reasons that I'm focusing your attention to this certification is for a very simple reason. You have to pay nothing for getting this certification. You need just to, pro to prove that you are providing services with a certain level of quality, and you have to prove uh, that uh, you have some specific characteristics. And once you approve that, you got, the, you got this kind of certification. And this is why, unfortunately, there are very, very few companies at a European level that got the certification. For example, the Cyber Security Made in Europe certification is a certification that uh, is telling you, look, uh, these guys are providing services according to GDPR. These guys are providing services according to the NIST framework. And by the way, 90% of the employee are employed in Europe. That of course, someone could say yes, bad or good, but we provide 90% of our, we are not against the globalization, of course, but 90% of our resources today are in Europe, okay? Uh, of course, our security operation center can be accessed uh, via a portal, so not just via our Salesforce, but also through direct to via portal. Our portal, it can be uh, used to access our services, both in quite common once you receive an attack. That is, this kind of service is operational 724. So if during the day or during the night, if someone contact us, we usually jump on a, on a train or jump on a, on a plane and we reach our client that has uh, received an attack. But I will, I will recommend this portal also for uh, every, all, all the citizens because of uh, we, we provide information for free on the specific IOC. So you receive an email and you have um, some doubt on this email, you know? So you can insert the host name inside the portal and we will tell you, look, we already know about this. Do not click, okay? So that's free. Or if you are receiving a file, before to click on that specific file, upload that file 
on that specific port. And we will tell you, look, in this file, there is, there is a malware, okay? Why we do that? We, because, of course, we believe in, the, uh, in sharing the information. And uh, we also think that uh, if we get more information, we are able to analyze more information and provide the services also to our, to our client in a better way. So our approach has given us the possibility to have more than 1,000. Actually, now I need to update this slide because we have two. We we invest a lot in awareness. We have a set of class, a set of uh, uh, sessions on Udemy, and we have actually more than 2,000 people that are following our education on Udemy. We have more. In we started, we built our security unit. Uh, in the, at the beginning of 2020, and now we have more than 1,100, 1,000, maybe next year, you know, 100 for so far clients who are spread across all the world. So we are not, we are based, as Alberto was saying before, in Italy, we have a strong presence in Spain uh, and in other regions, but we have clients in all the world. Actually, our security analyst are probably in the most important security operation center of Europe, just to give you an idea. So not the Italian security operation center. If you think at today, what could be the most important security operation center in Europe, our security analysts are there. Of course, are there. They cannot, we cannot manage that from our security operation center for obvious uh, reason. We get uh, more than 150 different certifications. We have uh, uh, we have uh, the 20% of our team is a certified ethical hacker because we want to give to the our client the best quality services. We got by Devo uh, an award on uh, uh, on uh, I saw Canada, so thanks a lot, uh, thanks a lot. And uh, so we have a very young team, but uh, with the strong uh, strong competence and deep uh, uh, deep quality of certification. Our security operation center is small, is large. I prefer to tell you what are exactly the number. We actually are managing today 7,300 events per second. That is not, so we are not huge, you know? but believe me, and by the way, those are very much optimized because of, uh, we work on the optimization of the event before to start and work on, on the event. Uh, since uh, I'm in this busy business since uh, quite a long time, I have to tell you that 7,300 events per second is not nothing. It's compared with uh, a um, quite large company in, uh, in Italy. Okay, I'm done. So, and there you Last week, last week we had eight. So I mean, we have a breakfast later or not? We have a breakfast. Okay, let me go. Eh? Okay. Just, just a moment. Moment that I, also for the people that are connected remotely, we have a break now, and then we will move. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's fine. I mean, I, I talk too quickly, so I mean, water create create disruption to myself. So. Uh, Rosita, Ana Maria, Michele, we have yes. to hold on for a uh, second. Domingo, yes, now we have a break. Uh, see you at uh, 12.15. Okay? 12, uh, no, uh, 12.15, yes. okay, 30, in 30 minutes. Okay, so thanks, Rosita, thanks, Ana Maria, thanks, Michele, thanks to everyone that is connected. We will see you in 30 minutes and uh, have a coffee. I, okay. For the people that are here, we offer. For the people that are remote, Take a coffee and we pay when we met, you know? Okay, okay. Ciao. Yeah. Let me download first. No, I'm, I'm just, I'm just doing that. Okay, I'm just... Thank 
Thank you. 